Alright guys, let's take a look. Well, I got to make some coffee this morning and check it out. So what's up with this thing? Alright, now I gotta fix another thing. Alright. Yeah, it's everywhere. What the hell? Alright. So, it must be leaking somewhere. It's not, not leaking from up here, I think it's somewhere back in there. So. Alright, this thing's probably two years old, probably. It's Keurig 2.0. Alright, so I got this thing on my test bench. Uh, turn my light on here. Yeah, I'm actually working on like a hundred different projects, so. Yeah, it's kind of critical having this coffee maker working. Um, so, I saw a couple videos online how to take it apart, but I'm not sure if my problems are the same as theirs. So, I saw that there was a couple little screws in here, and there's four screws in the bottom. It's got to get a screwdriver underneath it like that, and it's just coming up like that. There's a Phillips. Should be four in the bottom, too. Let's take a look. This might spill some water. We'll see. So there's four Phillips right there. It's very interesting. There's an RJ11 plug. So I'm guessing that is to a program firmware or to... It look, doesn't look like it's an extension card of any sort. Or maybe it is. Here, see that little wire that comes through right there? What that's for? It could also be a jake tag to program the firmware flash chip. But it looks like it could be a permanent thing because see this little channel right there that's created right there? That's usually to actually run a cord out the back. A permanent cord. So there might be some sort of accessory that connects to this. Alright, so actually another guy made a really cool video. I'll put a link down below. It's assembling it. I mean this thing looks it's a super headache to disassemble. So he took the top piece off then he took this top piece off here and that should just pop off the back but yeah, this thing is just a nightmare all the way through. Nothing easy. Definitely not meant to disassemble. Right, so for me, I, I'm pushing in and pulling up like that way and it's popping up. So I'm using a little small flathead screwdriver. Yeah, I mean, I fixed a lot of cell phones on tablets. I've actually made a lot of videos about it. So I actually do have some pretty nice tools. Shop Jimmy, all different kinds of tools for prying stuff up. But this one is a super headache. It's it's almost like uh, no matter what you're gonna do, I mean, you're gonna get, you're gonna have issues jacking the plastic up. So um, just be aware of that. I mean, there's no way to take this thing apart without screwing the plastic up somewhere. So, all right. So hopefully I have this light position good enough right here. But there's two more screws on top here, and this piece is just kind of locked down with these tabs. But you can't get to it in it. So it's almost like you gotta pop up on it. So I was using a large flathead, but. I mean, I could probably sand that down a little bit if I wanted to. Kind of uh, even it back down again. And go back, you can just kind of go like that to it. Okay. Not going to be perfect, but... Alright, get these off. But the back should pop open. But I think you might have to pop that forward a little bit to get this top to pop, top thing to pop up. Like this will pop up. That should, yeah, get it. Okay. yeah, everything about this thing is a headache. Oop. I figured that's probably what it was. It seemed like it was maybe a good bit. I'm gonna ant in there. Uh oh, <laughs> freaking ant! I can't get in there. Um, so that, like just a vent that goes on the top there. All right. So I think it's assuming the same thing. This thing should pop up. Should probably do the same thing, snap around the, the edge here. God, what a headache. Alright, so I got the kind of popped up a little bit around these holes like that. I was hoping I could do this without taking the front cover off, but is that all one piece? Yeah, looks like it is. Yeah, because I want to be able to see what's what's going on with this thing. Where's it leaking from? All right, so there's lots of hose everywhere. Hmm. You guys can see this stuff in the light. I know my light sucks on my workbench. Um, so see those tabs right there? You basically have to push down on this thing. So I grabbed both sides of my hands, and I pushed down on it. But I made sure it was off the ledge here. And then I should just come forward like that. All right, I don't think this is exposed enough where I can see where the water's leaking from. And then this hole, looks like it's there two more screws there. Screw there. But I think this whole thing should just pop forward. I'm actually able to pop this other cable, this case off right here. All right, so this just lifts up. 
I don't know if I can do the one hand or not, but it, I already got one side off. I'll show you that. There, like that. The whole back piece, it looks like it just comes right off. There we go. Cool, now I can see the insides. So I'm gonna put the water container back on it. And, well first I'm gonna get my flashlight and see if I can figure out where the leak is coming from, but I wanna run it and see where it's actually leaking from. If it's leaking from the pump, one of those tubes. Somewhere, it's leaving a puddle. So if you're not comfortable with like electricity or electronics, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, I am, I, that's what I do for a living, but. Um, well, I mean, fixing stuff like this is not my job. <laughs> IT is. Well, and electronics. All right. Um, so it looks like it's the reservoir right there, the hot water reservoir. All right. So hopefully it's not leaking from something major like a pump. Hopefully it's just a hose. Uh, I don't know what's what on this thing in. So... I'm guessing that's the main pump right there. See this little thing right here, this crankshaft right here? It looks like it's a little piston in there. This thing probably spins around. And that looks like a connection rod and a piston in there. It's interesting. So your motor hits a gearbox and then you have like a little piston in there. Oh, and what that little other extra motor is for right here? I don't know. No corrosion. That's your main water. Okay. All right. So I'm guessing this that main water reservoir probably feeds from the bottom and pushes out to the top and then feeds back into here, which then feeds the coffee after it's already been heated. And that's probably a either water inlet or looks like a vent maybe. All right, I'm gonna get my water reservoir and we'll do a test cup here. All right, make sure you plug into something with a good ground, especially if it's a water leak. All right, let's see if I can, uh, I've got a test cup up here. Hopefully this will work, I'll we'll even turn on. Um, you know, there might be some kind of safety switch. Some, some, some devices actually have a safety switch. So it knows the cover's off and it won't actually power on. But this one looks like it doesn't. So I gotta let it heat up. I'm gonna do a small cup here and hopefully be able to picture or capture where it's leaking from. Let's have a couple ants floating in the water. Yeah, I've had kind of an ant issue in the last couple months during summertime. All right, let's see if I can get this. I think I can do a, what does it say? Lift handle. Okay, if you can see this on camera. I think it's four. And I want to do the smallest possible. Four, and then go. I can see where it's leaking from right there. See right there? What the hell is that? What is that? Okay. You saw that, right? Leaking from right there. That was cool. Did you see that little piston action? <laughs> it was like a little, it's a little piston pump. Alright. But yeah, I saw where it was leaking from. What? Right there. See that? What is going on right there? There's supposed to be a hose right there. Or like a one-way valve. Alright. Alright, so that thing is just actually a little drain. So I think it's leaking from up here out here on this T fitting right here. Or that thing right there. Somewhere in there. And it's leaking down from there and then draining back into that little catch area, which then drains to the bottom. So, I'm going to do another test run here with the cup, and we'll, uh, I guess I couldn't see when the, when the water, water reservoir was on it. So, all right, so I think I figured it out with my flashlight on. So, I, I touched that pipe right there, this little thing right here, and then just, it just fell apart. Let me put that on my light here. But this little thing right here, it was actually in there, but it was just super, I barely touched it and it broke off. So this thing was probably weak and cracked, so I'm going to take this thing off. 
maybe I can glue it back together. I mean, I don't even know what this part is. I mean, I can look online. Um, I hope you guys can see this in that thing, but the valve should just come up like that. Here we go. Oh, the whole thing just disintegrated on me. Wow. Alright, so what is this thing? I mean, to me, it either looks like some sort of filter, right? Or a one-way check valve of some sort. But the plastic just totally disintegrated right here. So I'm going to go online and see if I can figure out what this is. Alright, so I went online, and I can't figure out what the hell this thing is. But whatever it is, it's clogged. I've tried blowing it on both sides, and whatever's in there, it's clogged. So, I'm going to keep on looking see if I can find the part. But, whatever it is, it's connected right off the air pump. So, I did some more research. This is a little air pump. It's like a backflow purge air pump. And it comes back up around, and it feeds in that thing. And then it also looks like it comes back, and it feeds into some sensor. So, it comes back in here. It some kind of probably like pressure sensor on the motherboard right there that controls like uh, it will detect like air pump pressure probably um, and then it goes back and it feeds the top of the uh, of the heater here but I don't think it's the main water control valve I don't know if it's just like a some sort of like purge or it would have to be obviously purge that's why it's connected to the air pump and not the main pump so I mean I guess I can take like a I can try to sand this down and glue a new uh, sort of like some kind of T fitting on there. Um, like I said, but that thing is that thing is whatever that is, it's clogged. And I don't think it's a check valve. I mean, it could be, but I can't blow on it either way. So I might hit my hit my air compressor, see if I can free it up. Um, but I guess I could use like an automotive T valve if it's just a filter. All right, so you can't so. find this part anywhere, but a couple different solutions you could probably do. I'm gonna try that to see even see if it works. I'm just gonna pop this one on there temporary. See if it actually fixes it. Um, but I might try to glue on or epoxy on a, a new T fitting here. Um, but you actually can take it apart. See those little two tabs. Um, hmm. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can just slide this hose on there and do it. We'll do a test. Uh, test go. This whole thing is just disintegrating. Like I said, I have a whole bunch of automotive T's. So I'm just gonna try to get that going. Just to see if that's actually where the leak is coming from. It has to be because this thing is just so brittle, it's just breaking apart. Alright, so I have right there. So it's behind there if you can't see it. The T, you know, obviously the pressure relief thing is not connected here. So uh, I'm going to do another test cup, see what happens. Put the reservoir on there, see if it leaks. Alright, so I'm going to do another test cup here. Four ounces. Remember before it was leaking. Uh, I can already hear it coming out of the cup. So before, I was looking right from that hole right there. You can see where the drip is coming from. I mean, there is a pressure sensor in there, so this little thing feedbacks some sort of pressure sensor on the motherboard. So that was four ounces. I mean, I don't really like the idea of not having a pressure, like a pressure relief valve on there. So, um, I know where the leak's coming from now. But what's weird is everybody seems to have a, a leak from a different spot. So mine just happens to be some brittle plastic. I mean, I've seen different, on different videos of air pumps going bad. Uh, different areas, so let's do it again. All right, so, this is actually is, is a, a pressure relief valve. It does separate, but it's a high pressure relief valve. So, my thought is, I mean, since I can't find this part anywhere, I'm just going to go with the T. And, I mean, dude, it was already leaking from there already. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was already leaking from there. So, if I have a high-pressure situation, it's just going to blow off one of these valves here. And what's it going to do? Leak from the bottom, just like it did before? So, um, yeah, I guess it could throw water into, like, this motor here. But that's not going to be a high-voltage motor. It's probably going to be a DC motor. Maybe 12 or 5 volts. 24 tops. Um, you know, you don't really want it to get in the, uh, the mains of the 110 down here, but, you know, I mean, it could have been doing that already. I mean, it could have been leaking from that way as is, just because I was looking at this valve, and you, if you just touch it, the whole thing is just so brittle, it doesn't even make sense to try to glue on a valve to it, because, um, it's just going to keep on breaking. It's just going to, it's going to shred, so I don't know why this thing, if it got super overheated, 
um, or what exactly happened to this thing, but I mean, it's not usable. So I'm going to put it back together and run a couple more test cups through it. Um, obviously, then I'm going to thoroughly clean it when I'm done with it. You know, run all the, the special curing stuff through it. The uh, I think it really the stuff, I forget what they call it, but it's probably just to break up any sort of like, uh, I don't use tap water in this thing. I always use like purified water. But if you're using like tap water, you have like a lot of calcium and lime buildup. So I'm going to run our cup through it and see what happens. You know, I never thought I was having too is that because this is not an elect electronically controlled valve, it's just, it's just by a certain amount of pressure. What would be the point of this? Going back to the motherboard, it seems like that would shut everything off. If this thing actually reached a high pressure situation, this con this control board right here would say shut down the pumps. So um, I'm guessing that says emergency, emergency. I, I have no idea. But yeah, you, you can't find diagrams on this thing online. Like Keurig does not want to have you take this apart and fix it. All right, I'm gonna do another eight ounce test here. Looking for leaks. That is a really cool design though. <laughs> it's funny that somebody had to come up with this thing. All the little valves and check valves and pretty ingenious actually. <sighs> yeah, these things were never designed to be serviced because you can't buy bars for them. All the parts I've been seen have been on eBay and they've been used. So used air pump or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, not even diagrams. So, um, yeah, these things were never meant to be serviced. Alright. Alright guys, kind of all back together. Alright, yeah, it was kind of brutal having coffee in the morning. But, um, all right, so if you're one of those OSHA guys, uh, you don't need to worry about my safety. I'm sure I always get these comments. <laughs> People are actually worried about me getting hurt. You know, it's like, dude, mind your own business. All right, um, all right, well, that's how I fixed it. Yeah, if you guys know where I can get this part, let me know. I mean, I'd love to replace it and fix it the right way, but yeah, I've already Googled for an hour, so even on eBay, I couldn't find them, so. All right, so it's next morning. Let's see if this thing actually works. All right. I don't actually use those K-cup things. I just uh, use like the full folders. Alright. Preheating. Alright, so when you put a cup like that in there, you don't get the you get a different set of options when you don't use a K-cup. So my option is two, and I want to do 16 ounces. And let's go. Alright, got some water coming out. Looking for leaks. <laughs> Make sure you have a good ground. <laughs> All right, we'll come back. All right, so we have a cup of coffee in there. All right, awesome. Yeah, because this thing was like 200 bucks, and uh, it had all the accessories too. But, all right, awesome. I think it's a fix for now, at least. Um, yeah, if I can find that part, I'll find that part. But. Yeah, uh, they, they didn't design this thing to be able to be serviced. So, alright guys, cool. Curing 2.0.